Welcome to our lecture online and in our next video on thermodynamics we're going to look at the pressure in a gas based on the kinetic model of an ideal gas and of course an ideal gas is a gas where the volume of the molecules are so insignificant to the volume of the box we can, we can ignore them and also the interaction between the molecules is like pure marbles hitting each other not losing any kinetic energy and not having any electrical attraction or repulsion towards each other and again if the gas is uh, rarefied enough, it's not really, really dense, we are okay with using that, those assumptions. So, I drew a single molecule inside the box, and of course there's a whole bunch of them, n molecules, a great number of them, and assuming that that molecule has a x direction in its velocity, so it's moving towards one of the walls on the side there. Of course, keeping in mind that any molecule will have a velocity in any direction, and that velocity will have an x component, a y component, and a z component. And of course, if we think about that, you can see that there is a right angle, um, right angle between the x and the z direction, and there should be a right angle between the, the y and the z and the x and the z direction. All right, now keep in mind that since we're talking about a great number of molecules and even though each of the molecules will have a different direction with a different v sub x, a different v sub y, and a different v sub z we can assume that the, on average all of them will have the same x, y, and z component on average uh, in their velocities and also realize that uh, we can use Pythagorean theorem that says that v squared is equal to um, v sub x squared plus v sub y squared plus v sub z squared and of course this would make that the average velocity or maybe even better yet the RMS velocity because when eventually we're going to take the velocity from that component uh, we're going to have to take the square root of that and the square root of the sum of all the v squares is actually the RMS velocity so but for now let's, let's just leave that out and just realize that later on we'll have to deal with that Okay, so how do we calculate the pressure? Well, the way we start is to realize that the momentum, and I'm going to use small p for momentum, and I'll write that down, momentum, so we don't forget it, is equal to the, um, the mass of the uh, molecule times the velocity in the x direction. Of course, that would be the momentum in the x direction. And then the change in momentum, when it hits the, the side and it bounces back, the change in momentum is going to be twice the momentum that it has because of course it has a velocity in one direction when it hits the wall and then it'll have velocity in the other direction when it hits the wall so the change of momentum will be twice the momentum in one direction. We also realize that the impulse, I'm going to use I for impulse, <clears throat> can be defined as the change in momentum which is also equal to the force times the time that it takes for that molecule to make that momentum change. Now, since the molecule is traveling from one end of the box to the other end of the box and back, you know that this only happens once every time that it travels twice across the length of the box. So we'll have to take that, in, that into account. And I guess I shouldn't use a large T, I should use a small T for time. All right. We also know that we can solve this for force. We can therefore say that force, and I should use a small P here, so we keep that constant. So force is equal to the change in momentum divided by the time that it takes. Now the change in momentum is going to be 2 times the mass times velocity in the x direction. So that's 2 times the mass times the velocity in the x direction divided by the amount of time that it takes to make that collision. Now to find the delta t we're going to use a simple equation that distance is equal to velocity times time or time is equal to distance divided by the velocity so you can say that this only happens once every time the molecule goes all the way across the box and back so the distance that it travels is going to be two times the length of the box and the velocity is simply going to be the velocity in the x direction so we can then go ahead and take the delta t to be equal to this so we know that the force is going to be to equal to 2mv sub x divided by the delta t which is going to be 2l divided by v sub x and if we simplify that, if we divide by fraction, that's the same as multiplying by its inverse so this is equal to 2mv sub x times the inverse of that which is v sub x divided by 2l and of course the 2's cancel out and this becomes equal, the force becomes equal to m 
times v sub x squared divided by L. Now we're going to go back over to understanding the velocity in the x direction. Notice that this is, of course, the case for 1, and but if we take all the molecules into account, and they all go in different directions, there's just billions and billions of them, even more than that, we can say that v sub x is approximately equal to v sub, x, uh, v sub y, which is equal to v sub z. So then this can be written as equal to 3 times v sub x squared, on average, on the magnitude portion of it, not direction, of course, which means that v sub x squared is equal to one-third v total for the, for the molecule. So if we're going to replace v sub x squared by v total, then we can say that this is equal to one-third m v squared divided by L. <clears throat> now, of course, that's the force of a single molecule. This is, so let's call it F sub 1. If we want to calculate the force for n molecules in the box, we'll have to multiply that by n molecules. So therefore, we can then say that the force caused by n molecules is equal to um, m v squared n divided by 3L. And then, of course, if you want to find the pressure, that's equal to force divided by area. So the pressure by n molecules in the box is equal to force by n molecules divided by the area over which those molecules act. And of course, that's going to be a complete side in the box. And so this is going to be equal to mv squared n divided by 3L times the area. And the area is, of course, L squared. So times L squared. And of course, L squared times L is the volume of the box. So this is going to be equal to mv squared n divided by 3 times the volume. Now, let's say that we have n moles of molecules in the box. Um, hmm, how do we handle that? Well, let's see here. We have a relationship between n and n. So the number of moles is equal to the number of molecules divided by Avogadro's number, which means that n can be replaced by little n times Avogadro's number like that. So here, instead of just writing it down as the number of molecules in the box, we can write it down as the number of moles times Avogadro's number. So this is equal to m v squared number of moles times Avogadro's number divided by 3 times the volume. And then when you take a look at Avogadro's number times m, which is the mass of a single molecule, that gives you the molar mass if you multiply those two together. So m times n sub a, so m times n sub a is equal to the molar mass. So another way of writing that is to replace m and n sub a with the molar mass. So we could say that the pressure by n molecules in the box is equal to um, m, the molar mass, times v squared times the number of moles divided by 3 times v. And this is then the final format of the pressure in a gas. It can be calculated by knowing how many moles you have in the gas, how much volume you have, how fast they're traveling, square that number, and uh, multiply times the molar mass and divided by 3. Then later on, we're going to compare that to the equation PV equals nRT, and then we'll find a relationship between the velocity and the temperature. But at this point, we can stop here because we've accomplished what we set out to accomplish. We're trying to find the pressure in the, in the box due to a gas, and we have found the pressure in the box due to a gas. Now, we'll realize later on also that this V here is actually the RMS velocity, the root mean square velocity of the gas, which is like the effective velocity of all the molecules in the box. And that's how you do that. Mm.